Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to Elden Ring. So, this is going to be a quick little video showcasing how to get the Bloody Slash Ashes of War. Now, it's a very powerful Ashes of War that can be used to a great extent, especially against some of the earlier bosses, and it is a super, super sweet move. So, I wanted to show you guys how to get it, because it's not exactly, you know, linear, and if you are new to the game, it might take you a little while to actually come across it. So right now, we are just at the elevator that you would come up after the tutorial boss. And we are just stepping out into the main area here. Now, just ahead, you will see the Site of Grace. There'll be an NPC standing up by the rock in front of it, but this is the first Site of Grace that you're really going to come across. And I'm showcasing here where the NPC would be. And this character does have a little bit of gear and a few other items to help us out along the way, such as Torrin here. And we're going to use him to great effect, and we're going to actually going to just walk you through step by step where to go. So you're going to want to head to the right of the grace, and you're going to see the big old golden guy on the horse. And you're going to want to skip him. You're just going to go past him. No need to fight him. So if you just go around him, and you kind of head from the direction where he was coming from, you should come across the ruins here, which will be the Church of Ella. There's another side of grace here if you do need it. And then you're going to want to head outside the opening on the right, and you're going to want to head up to the north and follow the road. You'll see a guy with a torch. If you see him, you know you're heading the right way. Now for the time being, you just want to follow the road and keep heading north. Now you'll see a big encampment here. What you're going to want to do is head to the right of that, towards the east. You don't have to worry about fighting any of the guys in the encampment. Just head east and you're going to be fine. Now, directly ahead of us, you're going to see another Site of Grace. This is actually one of the most important ones, because this is where you are going to unlock the ability to level up, as well as your horse. From this Site of Grace, you're going to want to head over towards the southeast and follow the road. And you're going to be following this road for quite some time. There's going to be some enemies on it, but you don't really have to worry about them. You can go right past them, and it should be fine. As you can see, very basic enemies, nothing you really have to worry about. There is an elite guy on horseback on this bridge. You can avoid him even on foot, but I would not recommend fighting him at this point unless you are pretty confident in your abilities. And you're just going to keep following the road. Now as you go across this road, you're going to see two giants pulling a carriage. If you see these guys, you are heading the right direction. You're going to want to take a left here and you'll come across some ruins. Now, if you get close to these, the name should pop up, and these are going to be the Waypoint Ruins. Now, from here, you just want to head to the right of the ruins, towards the east, and you'll come across the, the cliff up here, and then you guys will be able to see where we're headed. So that fortress directly in front of us is where we want to go. That's where the Ashes of War is located. So simply head down the cliffside, and make your way towards the right, so southeast. There's going to be a point here where you need to jump down. There's going to be two birds on the left. If you see the two birds, you know you're heading the right way. As you continue, you will see some gravestones sticking out of the cliff. When you come across those, you know you're heading in the right direction, and you're going to want to jump down to the middle one, or the top one, and then to the middle one, whichever is easiest, but the middle one is safe and then down to the ground. From there, head east, and you will come across some wolves, as well as some gravestones. The wolves are pretty weak for the most part, but you can ignore them entirely. You will also see a beach on your right. If you come across the beach, you know you're heading the right direction as well, and you just want to keep heading in this direction. You'll see a road with a bit of a fence up ahead, and that's basically the direction you want to be headed. Now to the right here, there's going to be another side of grace. I highly recommend sitting at this because this is a somewhat difficult area, especially if you have starter gear. So you may die a couple times, but it is worth it. That The Ashes of War Bloody Slash is super strong and great for early game gameplay. It's essentially what I use, and I absolutely love it. Now if you're coming through here for the first time, there's a little ghost here you can talk to, and he'll give you a bit of a hint as to what you're dealing with. 
The Demi-Humans walks wroth. Now their mother's been taken. Where are you, Lord Kenneth? The knight bedeviled by blood. That gives you a little bit of a hint. The knight bedeviled by blood is the guy we gotta deal with to get the Ashes of War. Now this is entirely possible on foot. I do highly recommend having Torrent with you if possible because it will be easier. There is a crossbow that will be shooting these little enemies. Leave that alone. Leave them alone. Just simply ride past them. There's going to be a bunch of soldiers and there's going to be a big old pumpkin guy. Leave him alone and kind of stay towards the outskirts of the area. You'll aggro three knights that you'll have to kill and possibly a fourth. But the pumpkin guy you will not have to deal with as long as you don't get too close to him. So simply take these guys out. Since we're on Torrent, it's a little bit easier for us. And, you know, as we're continuing through here, there's not much we really have to deal with. A few soldiers, but they go down easy. And you can just ignore the pumpkin guy. He'll deal with the small little enemies, and you won't have to worry about him. As you come through here, you're going to... You actually can see where I died on the previous one you have some fireball guys that you're going to want to deal with, as well as some rats. Now, these guys, on their own, aren't too bad, but together, pretty bad situation. So if you have any ranged abilities, I highly recommend equipping them. I have a glintstone shard here that I'll be using, or a... what is it here? Glintstone scrap. And I'll be using that against the fireball guys. It is a bit of a rare item, but very, very nice. I'll also have some poison bone darts. These will be just to draw aggro of enemies. As you can see though, these glintstone scraps are super strong. They completely one-shot these guys, um, which is going to make our life a lot easier because we don't have to deal with them. And because lock-on is so far away, you can use them to great effectiveness, even with far away enemies. Now we're not going to waste that last scrap. We're going to use our dart here on the rats just to draw aggro. And we can use our shield counter to stun the rats and then take them out with relative ease. Use our dart there to grab the aggro. Do a little bit of a heal and then another shield counter. One more rat. And uh, we messed up the shield counter there, but we got it on the second try. Now, also, guys, I will mention this is a bit of a this is a voiceover, so I do apologize. Um, the reason for that being I had some audio issues. Hopefully, it won't be like that in the future. But I did have the recording here, so I figured I'd use it, do a bit of a voiceover, and it's not too bad. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Hopefully, it's educational. Now we're coming in here because there's a few other enemies that will ambush us later if we're not careful. There are two regular soldier guys, and there are one rat left. Or is one rat left? <laughs> That's proper grammar. So, two little hollows and a rat, as well as a Nomadic Warrior's cookbook. Pretty nice. Good find. That will unlock the recipes for blood resins, blood arrows, and blood bolts. And the blood roses you collect around the area will be a key ingredient to making those. One more fire guy, but we will one shot him, so it's not an issue. And then we are dealing with the Blood Eveled Knight. So this guy is somewhat strong, which you can backstab him, which is really nice. He's also susceptible to parries and shield counters. He's also very staggerable with the halberd, which is part of the reason we're using it. Um, you can stagger him very easily. You can also block his attacks. As long as you don't get the blood buildup all the way, you should be fine. And we are struggling just a tiny bit here against him. But there we go, we get the shield counter, and then from here we just use the halberd to stagger him. And once he is dead, we get the Ash of War Bloody Slash. Very, very good ability, and it is super strong. Now, I also did a video explaining where to get the tool to actually equip these Ashes of War on your weapons. So go check that out if you don't already know. And we're going to do a bit of a showcase here. Just to kind of show you guys, on a basic unleveled longsword, 
how strong it is, because you're going to be one-shotting most of the enemies that you would normally be four to five-shotting. It's really strong. It does take away a little bit of your HP, so keep that in mind. Um, but as you can see here, we're going through the encampment here, and, you know, we're going through these soldiers like butter. We're just absolutely cutting through them. As long as they're not blocking, we are one-shotting them. And this is an unleveled sword. This is just something you can get basically five, ten minutes into the game and not have to worry about upgrading anything, and you're going to be really strong. Now, you do got to keep in mind that it does do damage to yourself, and you can actually kill yourself with this ability. I've done it a few times accidentally. But it is super strong. It has a lot of stagger potential. Um, and it is super effective against a lot of the beginner bosses. So yeah, it is very strong. So hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to give it a like. If you're new to the channel, always consider subscribing as it does help me out a ton. And hopefully, I'll see you guys in the next one.